Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a um, impromptu episode of the FPV live stream, but it's not actually live. Um, we weren't quite prepared to do a, a whole live event this episode, just because it was kind of an impromptu thing, and so we're we're just excited to kind of get together and do something offline. But you'll be able to download all of the audio for this or watch the video, um, see all of Big Whoop's uh, beautiful smiling faces, uh, <laughs> or not if you don't want to, <laughs> and. And so, but yeah, so the, the goal here is to talk a little bit about um, techniques and methods and things that you can do to kind of make your lap times a little bit faster, uh, to think about some techniques and ways of flying and just things to think about while you're practicing and doing courses to become a better FPV racing pilot. So um, joining us today is Zachary Thayer, also known as A Noob. Uh, Jesse P FPV. Uh, What's up? And uh, well, actually, why don't you guys all introduce yourself? Let's start uh, left to right. I'm Zachary <laughs> Thayer, uh, known as Anub on some online social media crap. <laughs> I'm Jesse Perkins, Jesse P. I'm Christian Avedon. I go by Nodiva. Chris Fisher, go by Steve Fisher. And yeah, he is. He's uh, just hiding. I, I've got like just the the. <laughs> Forehead of Chris. <laughs> but, no, that's But um, so yeah. And so all of this is the the composition or most of Team Big Whoop. Uh, Jordan's upstairs. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna go get him right now. And Jordan right Tempkin, whom you've already met if you tuned in last week or two weeks ago, um, you've already met. But uh, he's gonna come and join us too. Um, so I guess why don't we start with um, – I'd love to hear a little bit more about your guys' individual careers, what you're doing. Tell me about um, Big Whoop, where that's going, um, all of that stuff. I, everybody's always interested to hear kind of who you are and what your accolades are and uh, you know what, what you're interested in, what you're interested in next. Yeah, so I mean the man who would love to tell the story just ran upstairs, but uh, I guess we can fill <laughs> So, um, why don't you, you know, let's I just start with each of you individually, kind of like what, you know, what you're known for. And then, uh, we'll, we'll go on to the team when, uh, Jesse gets back. All right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm known for anything at this point, <laughs> uh, other than trying to copy Maddie's stunts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Our, I think my goals personally are to enjoy all of this, uh, have a good time and of course do the best you can. Mm hmm um, and at the same time, you know, help as many people out because only introduce yourself. Tell them a little bit about what you're known sure. for. And um, I'm Jesse Perkins. I have a YouTube channel. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, that's that's good I enough. I took third at the Phoenix Cup. I helped Jordan okay. take first on the teams race at the uh, Multi GP Nationals. Oh yeah. Um. I don't know. Cool. You're sort of a big whoop. I mean, I'm a big whoop. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There we go. <laughs> team big whoop. That's right. <laughs> Drone house. Drone house. Drone house. Yeah, tell us a little bit about drone house. I think we've all seen yeah, the videos, friend. you know, flying little micros around doing uh, yeah. drone drone sumo wrestling. Um, but uh, you know, what's what's the idea there? What exactly? Uh, how did how did that come about? And what's the future plans for it? I think it was Zach's idea. Yeah, so back at Vegas Underground, the first Vegas race, I tried to get a bunch of people to, you know, rent a house together. Jordan Tampkin yeah. in the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so back at the Vegas Underground, I tried to get a bunch of people to join in on a nice Airbnb house. Um, ever, no one really responded to me or guaranteed it, so... Me and my cousin, we just got a little Airbnb ourselves, and it had a nice patio and a big barbecue. Yeah. We had uh, all the New Mexico crew over, so Sean Taylor and his friends. Okay, yeah. And we had a nice steak dinner, and then from there, I was like, hey, we got to make this happen. Right. Um, and then it took sort of two events later, um, we got one going for... <laughs> <laughs> For the acceleration sponsored team FPV race. Yeah, right, right. exactly. So that was the first official drone house. We got yeah. what like fifteen people in a house, and it was super fun. So we decided every event we go to, we're gonna 
see how many pilots we can fill a house with. Yeah, and, so since then we did one in Phoenix that okay. was probably my favorite. And uh, then we sort of had an impromptu one in Dubai with the nine of us traveling with Big Whoop, all hung out and did micro races in the sumo event. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's been a blast because you don't have to ever sit around and talk about non-quad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're building with your friends. You know, these are all really – all these pilots that go to all the races are really cool people. Right. And awesome pilots to learn from. So yeah. you get to hang out and talk shop with all these pros from around the world. Excuse me, the nation so far. Yeah, yeah. And um, and then we fly a lot of micro races. Yeah. That's a big part. Awesome. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's one of the biggest, best things about this uh, entire community is that, you know, everybody, you know, no matter what you're doing, you come, you come to an event, you go to a race, you just, even if it's just local or big, everybody is there to have fun, to help each other. You know, you say like, oh crap, I, you know, broke my camera or something like that. Six people will walk up to you and be like, hey, I've got a spare for you. You know, like just like that attitude, even when you're competing against one another is just fantastic and fun. And it, it develops such an amazing, strong uh, community. Um, so taking yeah. all of that and compacting it into one tiny Airbnb for an entire weekend sounds all the better. <laughs> it's really good. You got to come to one. You'd love it. Oh, I would. I'll, I, I, I missed the, uh, so you, there's something about a first come first serve basis, right? Yeah, kind of. I'd like to figure it out where we can maybe make it a little more fair. Maybe we start doing lottos or something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of, you know, at this point, you, there, you, there's so much interest in the drone house uh, things that uh, people are able to kind of take those seats and then, you know, you can only get an Airbnb so big in a particular yeah, place. Yeah, that's so. true. But I mean, for example, at the um, Mega Caverns race in about a month in Louisville, mm -hmm. Kentucky, mm -hmm. uh, we've got a full house there, but we're inviting a lot of the pilots over to the house for micro races. I don't think we could possibly invite all 84 over just because <laughs> of the situation with the airbnb i know but we can try we yeah can try. <laughs> the house we rented is actually a, a, a mega re cavern a residence in use and okay. the people that rent it out just go to their mom's house it's like a family of four <laughs> okay and running it out they explain to uh save money for their kids college funds so we got to yeah. be respectful and treat the neighbors yeah well. yeah and that's what made me question the 84, but <laughs> we plan on having, you know, some quiet, mature get-togethers with some intense micro-races. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they'll be very quiet. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Respectful. That's awesome. Cool. Uh, so Jordan joined in a little bit late. We're talking about um, how to be a fast pilot, what uh, techniques and things that uh, you would be willing to dispel upon us. <laughs> Or bestow upon us, yeah, the bestow upon us. Uh, but yeah, so uh, who are you? What are you doing here? What's your goals as a pilot? Uh, who am I? Um, I don't know. I'm probably like the rest of these guys. I just like quads, you know. Yeah. It all started. Yeah, we're we're pretty big whoops when it comes down to it. <laughs> <laughs> but in all honesty, yeah, it's just I don't know. It was fun. I've always had a need for speed. I used to ski race and whatnot. Yeah. So I've always loved the adrenaline dump of going really fast. And FPV kind of did that for me. And then from there, I don't know. It was kind of people kept saying that, wow, you're fast. And then it stuck. So I stayed <laughs> fast. Oh, no. I think your new nickname is Slow Joe. Oh, uh, except for in Dubai, where I went slow. <laughs> 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 which we covered in the uh, previous episode yeah, with team big exactly. <laughs> all right uh, uh next uh not oh, sorry. anymore not anymore you're you're going back to fast yeah i'm Joe. going back to fast 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 is the new black slow, <laughs> fast <laughs> <is> new slow. <laughs> cool next on down the line that's me i'm christian avidon and I just like tinkering with stuff and got into some quad building and mm -hmm. eventually ran into these guys here in the Colorado scene, joined up and kind of just riding the wave, hanging out, racing quads, doing fun stuff. Yeah. He's a cast pilot. Awesome. If you guys at home don't know. You don't know about <laughs> this guy. You know. Thanks. He's a big he just does, He loves quad things, you know, and quad stuff. He's a big whoop. He's a big whoop. Yeah. I'll, I'll, as, so say we all. And Chris? Yeah, Chris, uh, Chris Fisher, um, 
Uh, I guess I'm known for starting Black Bolts and designing the XBR. Um, I've been to all the races with these guys, but I haven't placed in any podiums yet. Uh, the most success I've had at the races was probably at XDC2, where I, I won like four races in a row and knocked out like, I don't know, 12 guys, which was really fun. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, but I didn't actually place on the podium. I was, Sean Taylor knocked me out of the sky. It was, uh, I got to get him back for that. But, uh, he rammed you? He did. So he owes you Starbucks. That's his rule. Anyone he nails out there, he says he owes Starbucks. Huh. I know that. You can exercise that. Yeah. Just you got you got to see you got to see how high you can get the bill for one drink. Like you know, can you make it like eleven, twelve dollar drink? I'm sure you could pull it off. Lots of sprinkles, Lots of sprinkles. Of sprinkles. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, so thank you guys so much for introducing each of yourselves. And as a whole, they are all Team Big Whoop, and they are all Big Whoops together. And they do a lot of. <laughs> they, hey, they, hey, <laughs> say this with me. Whoop. Paul. Whoop. Paul. 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Paul. Yes. Whoop. whoop. There it is. Man. Okay. Do I keep? Do I keep saying whoop? Maybe. It's really uh, close. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Whoop. Really good job. <laughs> cool. So let's move on to the uh, the topic for tonight. How how do we get faster? What uh, what I I don't know. This is, I, this is kind of more Zach's yeah. area of expertise. So I'm kind of yeah. Okay. Step one. It's kind of open ended, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's very open ended. It's. I would say it's definitely tricky. You know, everyone says stick time is the best time or mm -hmm. the best way, but mm -hmm. I, I kind of disagree with that statement. Okay. I do too, because there's a couple people, I, I don't actually even have names, but I've seen a lot of people who fly a lot and mm -hmm. they sort of stay at the same level. Um, I've seen a lot of people who barely fly and accelerate insanely skill wise. Okay. Um, how about how about this? Don't be afraid to wreck your gear. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, that's a huge one. That's okay. a huge it's point. It's not flying, it's crashing. Yeah. So this hobby is the time between flights. Okay. If anyone hasn't recognized that. So it's when we're hanging out in drone house, yeah. you know, shooting the shit, repairing our stuff. Um, so when you go out to fly, you really need to be there to fly if you want to get better. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're worried about your equipment, well, that's going to take away from your flying. Yeah, yeah. So, so let me say it back. So we have there, – there's kind of two kind of conflicting – theories here is that a lot of people will say that the only way to get better is to just get your hands on the controller get out there and fly on the other Partially. hand yeah but on the other hand you're saying that it's how you fly and the way you fly that is going to encourage you to go faster maybe even a little bit more than just stick time by itself yeah so i mean i strongly believe Stick time by itself is only going to get you more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, Which is important. Imagine, yeah, imagine you never take big bites. Imagine you go, hey, I'm going to fly level mode for a year. And then, hey, I'm going to start rate mode. Mm -hmm. But I'll swap back and forth between level. You know, if you if you look at it that way and you try to play it safe, well, stick time is not going to get you anything. Okay. So if you stick time is important if you're taking the right steps and the right measures you know if you're yeah. being self-critical and i think that's the biggest key point you are the only one that knows what you're doing wrong so you really got to pay attention to what you're doing and try to stop your bad habits or okay. pick up good habits what do you think what things do people normally do wrong that they might not notice that they're doing or what what things should you be paying attention to um that that you should be correcting as a pilot maybe think let's think like intermediate level like someone who's doing okay you know think placing fifth sixth in a like a regional event um you know what what is going to take them from fifth to second to first um what 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 mistakes should they be looking out for to kind of take it up that next notch i think smoothing out your your flight is a big one because you lose a lot of speed just over correcting on the roll going back and forth you know, struggling to just keep a consistent, smooth line. I think that's really important okay. in terms of the speed. And that, that goes to say, like, know where your limit is. So as you progress as a pilot, you're obviously going to be able to go faster and faster. Mm -hmm. But know where your limit is, how fast you can go, and fly that speed. But we I also think you have to sometimes go 
go outside your comfort yeah, zone. It seems like you get tra- right. you can get stuck in this trap of flying within your comfort zone, and it can hold you back eventually. And that's the right. risk so, of just focusing on stick time. Yeah, so there's like a – it's sort of a delicate balance. You need to know what your skill is, and that's going to dictate your – essentially your – comfortable lap time on the track okay and then you're also going to be able to have to watch the field and know if you need to push it and then you're going to need to pay attention on where on the track you can push it you know everyone flies different everyone's going to be comfortable at different sections on the track Mm -hmm. so really what it comes down to though is you have to fly consistent so you know look at f1 racing it's prime example they're you know tenths hundreds of a second apart from each other right they're not seconds apart so right that really shows to the consistency. So if you, this is, this is racing. It's the same thing. You have to be consistent. So if you can put down one hot lap and then you crash out, well, you lost the race. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a really really good thing to mention about um, intermediate pilots getting Mm -hmm. in, in the the ruts of controlling their height with throttle. Okay. So there's one interesting thing that, um, we did as an experiment is uh, we programmed in the Tyrannus several throttle levels on switches that would constantly hold the throttle at that, at that level. And then the only way to control your height was to do it with pitch. Okay. And it was a great exercise because it really, when you're hauling ass, you need to be able to control your height with pitch and not throttle. You need okay. the throttle to be propelling you more than giving you lift. lift. Okay. So you're saying that if I'm coming in, for example, at a gate, and I'm, you know, five, 10 feet too high, I shouldn't be pulling off the throttle and letting it drop. I should really just pitch it forward a little bit, put the nose down, it, it, you know, yep. if, if that's my, if that's an option. And if it's possible, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have, to, you have to act a lot quicker to be able to pull that off, so you have to anticipate it further ahead. Because you're now, great, you're now accelerating, you're now accelerating into a potential mistake, right? Right. Sorry, right. go ahead. <laughs> No, it's okay. Uh, a great way to train for that, though, is to just lock the throttle out so you can't change it. Okay. And do that Do that on the Tyrannus, or uh, most controllers can do that pretty yeah, easily. Yeah. yeah. And then fly only with pitch. And, you know, I'm not saying stay that way forever, but just just to make the transition to thinking more about pitch versus uh, throttle as your height control it makes a huge difference. At least it did for me. Okay. And forward flight, you know, a lot of intermediate people – only have 10 degrees of tilt and as we've learned you know the more forward oh, tilt you can, have can then your yeah your thrust vector is down instead of back sure so if you have a lot of camera tilt you're forced to go forward which you know then throttle less dictates your height yeah and pitch yeah. more dictates yeah your yeah height that. so kind of just we've seen a lot of people buy an XBR who've been flying pretty much flat camera tilts, then because of the way the XBR hood is designed, it's forced to 30 to 35 degree camera mm-hmm. tilt, and they got way faster, way better pilots just right. by having more camera tilt because right. it forced them to go forward instead of hovering. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even we have problems hovering and keeping our altitude because mm-hmm. that's really hard to do because... I don't know, just the way it is. So right, more tilt. Just even if it's scary and even if it makes you go fast, just throw a bunch of tilt on there, and it will it will kind of make you a better pilot. That's okay. another great point, though. When you do tilt, it forces you to fly with pitch and not with throttle. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because your your throttle isn't going to change at least your vertical your your upwards altitude. Um, yeah, as much. nearly as much anymore you're just going to kind of you're going to almost go faster more than you are going to go up mm-hmm. <clears throat> um so that's that's a huge one yeah just throw a bunch of tilt on there and see what happens yeah so so far we've got um smoothness which i want to talk about a little bit more we've got um use pitch to maintain your altitude instead of your throttle um you could practice that by throwing it on a switch and increase your uh camera tilt uh beyond where you're currently comfortable so that it pushes you into um thinking in terms of pitch instead of in terms of throttle yeah what else another big one is you're only as good as your competition (laughs) find people who are good that's what i was gonna say flying with them 
I have some friends and but... make, make a team. Call yourself a team all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> and then start flying together. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, then, then you are a team because you take advantage of the team. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know if that's 100% true, though. I didn't have anyone I flew with. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to have that, yeah, but, but it sure helps. helps. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Like, but also, I'd say plus pay we, attention to that. Argue. And you, we, we argue over, over every yeah. aspect of flights and mm -hmm. and frame design, and you know we're always hashing it out and making it better and yeah. pushing limits. So it really helps to have good people in the hobby. The There's a bunch yeah. of people out in LA, and I would say like Mapu and people. You know? Dude, but he was two hours away from me. I don't know, but you still had people around you who were your competition in one way or another. <laughs> Sure, but I only flew with them maybe yeah. once. But that's a month. what drives you to yeah. become better. Just to I would know. say, yeah, to just know. to know they're there and to know that you want to beat them. What the yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. What the level is. And then if you, I would say at that point, if you're gonna find people, you need to either start shit with someone or have some kind of, you know, <laughs> you, <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to. <laughs> Well, the thing is, the point being is, you can't, you don't want to just get comfortable flying with whoever right. you're flying with. Right. You have to want to beat them. Otherwise, flying with someone's not going to help, right? Yeah. You want to be you pushing guys just each go other. Out there and you go, hey, let's just fly circles around trees. Well, I don't think anyone's going to get better fast. Yeah. I think so yeah. right each of us all yeah. want to beat each other all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly. With bass. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, smoothness, uh, tilt control. <laughs> Extra angle um, and uh, competition. Get a team. Get a team. Get some friends. Or Or, you know, keep your foes really close. Yeah. <laughs> Tell your or foes both. they're your friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else you guys got? Um, I would say fly with your throttle. Well, I see a lot of people who like will go around corners and keep a consistent throttle and they sort of fly backwards and then around a corner. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, the, the throttle is what controls your whole quad. So mm -hmm. if you're not getting on the throttle, like it's not like a car. There is no slowing down for corners. The only way you slow down is by, you know, giving it changing direction, yeah, changing direction by giving yeah. it thrust yeah. the opposite direction you want to be going. So with that, you know, you really got to learn how to ride the throttle through a corner if you want to go fast. Yeah, the apex um, should be yep, your highest in, throttle. Dive yeah. into the corner. And then along with that point to do yeah, that. wreck a whole bunch of times. To yeah, that. <laughs> sure. But with that point. You know I mean? That's a yeah. stumbling block. Yeah. yeah, you will. Yeah, definitely. It takes a while to learn that. Um, but with that point, to be able to do that, you also have to uh, look ahead on the track. Okay. I don't know how many people do that. I know it's a big thing in every single racing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you are trying to correct for the gate you're about to fly through, it's too late. You're okay. going to crash. Okay. So you need to be flying through the current gate and setting up for the next gate, setting up for the next corner, the next yeah. flag, whatever it is. You aren't flying where you currently are. You're flying the next move forward. And okay. that alone will – that alone with the you know flying smooth, those two sort of go hand in hand, will definitely speed you up a ton. Yeah, okay. look through the turn, not at the turn. Okay. I got enough for that one. Yeah. Um, I, I recommend taking the extra full day or full weekend to learn to fly with a wider angle lens. Oh, good point. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, you know, it starts to feel natural after a handful of batteries. And mm -hmm. once it does, you can see your, your gate way sooner, way sooner yeah. than a lot of your condition. And um, your brain learns to interpret, you know, at first, something seems farther away than it actually is that's the effect of a wide angle oh you're seem like you're going faster yeah like super yeah, view the sides are just screaming by right but your brain learns to interpret that in a more natural way and it doesn't take as long as you might think yeah no it, i agree with you that I, yeah. I made i made that switch not that long ago and uh the, the thing that i struggled with the most when i just you know for those first few batteries was um altitude I couldn't tell how high I was from the ground anymore. Yeah. Like I felt like I could still hit gates pretty pretty well, even though they were smaller, further away. But I would I found myself constantly hitting the ground because I was just like, wait, I I thought I had more, more more height. Um, but so but so what you're saying is with that wide angle lens, you are more you you're you're able to do. Yeah, there's more information. You're able to do this kind of um, plan or flying the next obstacle better because you're already looking at it you can already see it whereas your competition yeah. might not be able to with a 2.8 or 2.5 millimeter lens 
I think there's a slow transition. I think everybody's getting a little bit wider right now. I yeah. I agree. But it's yeah, with that point, after you get comfortable, throw your old lens on and go, How did I fly? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just so you just so you like I tried flying two eight the other day and like when you turn it's like someone's like taking Whoosh. the panel and just pulling it across your face. You're like, Where'd everything go? Yeah. It's really yeah. confusing. Same thing with like trying to go back and like fly something on PPM and Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. What else? Some practice. Tips. I'm all about fundamentals. I oh, think yeah. you can't practice the fundamentals enough. You know, okay. set up, set up. You know, like you were saying in a podcast with Way, I, I saw recently. Mm -hmm. You talked about setting up the course to practice uh, what's difficult for you. You were you were talking about I think long sweeping turns were yeah. something you were mm -hmm. working on. Yeah. I think the fundamentals, just like you were talking about, is ideal. It's super valuable stuff, and it's easily overlooked. Yeah, and furthermore, with fundamentals, I would say that goes with uh, tuning your rates and expos to how you fly. Okay. Um, you're definitely going to want enough rates, you know, where you can correct if you need to, or if there's some kind of split S, you can flip over it real quick. Um, but tuning your rates is also important. That goes with the fundamentals. You know, you should be able to take your quad and flip it, you know, 180, 90 degrees, 270, whatever it is, you should be able to be able to just flick your stick and get there. Mm -hmm. However, however fast or slow your rates may be, and you want to be able to end at that angle. So, eventually, when you're on a course, you know you go, "Hey, this is a U-turn corner." You can flip your quad around and be on the gas sooner, mm -hmm. rather than you know fighting your corner and waiting for it, looking for it. You know, you want your quad to feel like second nature of flying. You want to be looking at the course. And on that note, actually, there's some debate I think still in the air about should you have like oh different rates for different racetracks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And at least for me, I think, you know, you should always just use the same rate so you know how your quad feels. You mm -hmm. shouldn't be really changing stuff up. Because, I'm on the other side of the debate on that one. Yeah. So, think, exactly. So, like, I'm with some, Jordan. People, some people think, you know, you should just know how your quad feels and it should just work everywhere. Sure. And then some people think, you know, like, oh, it it's a, a couple batteries. Yeah, it's a tighter course. It just takes it's a couple uh, batteries to learn exactly where your limits are, and it changes yeah. the way you fly. Yeah, there's yeah. a skill in adaptation like that, but it's, but it's. I'm not <laughs> saying you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey, let's, yeah. Let's You're race. a much better pilot than me. Let's race. Yeah. Yeah. You let's can race. change rates every course, and I won't. I mean, I strongly believe being able to go, hey, I'm going to flip a 180 or flip a 90 or flip an X or Y, whatever angle it is, yeah. being able to do that without thinking is much more important than yeah. going, hey, this is a faster, slow track. And if you're, I feel if your rates are limiting you on a track, then your rates weren't set up or you weren't comfortable with them to begin with. Right. I'm just always trying to achieve that point of maximum resolution. And some courses don't need to be able to flip super fast like I keep for my freestyle rates or whatever. Right. I never, ever get to that part of my stick. So why not spread out the resolution to the entire stick length? Yeah. 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 So it depends on the person on that one. Really. Yeah. So the point is be comfortable with your setup. Um, set it up. Spend time to tune it. It's just like setting up your quad. You need to tune your rates to yourself and then to your track if that's what you like doing. Um Another thing that really helps me is reviewing my footage of okay. flying and, okay. and trying to understand where I screwed up or where I could have gone faster or how the turn, you know, should have been tighter or looser or whatever the, the case may be. It's reviewing footage and review footage of people who are better than you, especially on the same course. Yeah. If you can compare your footage to someone Absolutely. else's, that helps a lot. Yeah. Get angry at your own stuff. You know, every little mistake you make is your mistake. It's not someone else's. It's not the rig. Right. Because you can set that up. It's all stuff that you most likely built. Yeah. Um, so if you're seeing something you don't like or if it's not as smooth, you know, get angry at yourself. Yeah. Go learn. Go learn what you need to learn. Ask help. Ask for help. Um, start some shit with yourself. Yeah. Start some shit with yourself. You know, but, uh, you know, sort of off this point, you know, it really also is important to tune your quad. Like yeah. a lot of people will sort of fly with a quad that shakes and goes, it flies fine. Yeah. But this guy, you know, <laughs> Jordan, oh. this guy, this guy, but, uh, <laughs> once, <that? laughs> once you get a quad that's set up, right, you'll immediately be able to fly better. It's yeah. just, 
last year. There's no question about it. It just makes everything. The quad responds to what you want it to do. It doesn't freak out ever. You can see better because it's not constantly bobbing around. So yeah. um, if you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to tune, you know, PIDs have nothing to do with quads. It's control theory. They've been around for ages using industry. So uh, go read some papers, watch some YouTube videos. It's or all over the place. Or ask us for help. Yeah. Yeah, or ask yeah. Jesse for help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only Jesse. <laughs> um, yeah. We're all willing to help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. With that being said, don't ask people for PIDs because that's not how they work. It's per individual system. Mm -hmm. um, and there are no preferences in PIDs, despite what people might say. It's for the system, mm -hmm. for the specific setup. So mm -hmm. if you have an identical quad, you can transfer them over. But if you don't, then don't be surprised when stuff doesn't work for you. Yeah. Um, is it okay if I step back just a second? Sure. Uh, Chris, you were mentioning that you review your flight footage and compare it against others. Um, do you have an example maybe of where uh, that was particularly useful? Or like, was it at an event? Or is it, you know, just when you guys are out kind of racing against each other? Or Yeah, you know, Back when there was a, a good debate from uh, Conrad when he talked about heavy quads versus light quads, mm -hmm. um, I studied a ton of his footage and I tried to learn how it was to fly because I, I didn't actually own a heavy quad and I didn't want to build mine up that way and I like flying super light stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to understand his, his uh, debate on pitch uh, control because it's heavier, you don't have you're not as far forward in the pitch so it's easier to, to control because the further you get to 90, 90 you have zero high control mm -hmm. and you know and the further you get there the harder it is to uh to deal with so i was trying to understand how conrad flew and i would watch his stuff frame by frame and understand you know how how he took a turn and what it was like for him mm -hmm. and uh so it, it, it's not like it paid off on one race or anything i mean i just studied a lot of the a lot of his footage versus mine okay and watch the differences and honestly i couldn't tell if it was I mean, I, I didn't, I couldn't tell if it was better or worse. So I'd like yeah. to actually add to that. The thing I've noticed is a light quad will be harder to pilot, but it will always be faster if you can pilot it. Okay. Yeah, never go with the quad. Conrad is totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to edit that part out. No, he's totally wrong. Conrad, you're but, wrong. I'm not editing well, that out. Well, he may be he's right and he may be wording it. He may be yeah. wording it wrong. <laughs> if what I'd have to say is he's, pilot too. Yeah. He may be pilot. What I'd yeah. have to oh, yeah. say is pro his argument may have been worded slightly poorly. It is much easier to pilot a heavy quad at a fixed altitude. Well, well and, and this he, was specific to the Vegas Underground. No, no, no. This is all across the board. Okay. His idea was you use less brain power if you're not fighting that pitch height bullshit. But what if and you I have totally spare brain that. power? <laughs> that's, that's not the issue. <laughs> You put the spare into the next lap. <laughs> so you can always push for it because you're only going to fly as fast as your brain can deal with stuff. So if you right. have less to deal with, then perhaps you can be faster. But truth be told, totally you still have to that. deal with all the same stick movements, even if they're less. No, nah, there's more to it than that. And Conrad's on to something, but I don't think it's in heavier quads. I don't think that's the answer. I definitely believe that there's – a lot to minimizing your brain power to control the quad. I definitely believe that. Sure. The wanna, more assistive the flight, the better. You want to make it an extension of yourself, like a baseball glove yeah. on, almost, like where it's just like it is a part of you. You kind of it, – it, it's – it's it's you're not trying to fly something. You are something. Uh, that sounds really and, hokey, but, I mean, that's kind of how it feels sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I'd rewind that back to flying one set of rates and being super comfortable on that. I, I'm on your side of the the coin on that one, but uh, <laughs> don't tell Jesse. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. Any other uh, top tips for just kind of practicing and learning to fly faster in general? Yeah, my biggest ones are those first few points. You know, fly smooth, mm -hmm. look ahead, mm -hmm. um, and then be comfortable with your setup. Those are my biggest points. Um, and if you focus on those and really analyze, self-analyze yourself, hate yourself, you know, when you mess up. Love yourself. Or love yourself the whole love time. Yourself. Love yourself, love your quad. <laughs> love yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, so after you're done <laughs> after you're done hating yourself, go love yourself just for the balance. Um, 
Oh my. No, there's some other like I want oh, some old stuff. Like, I got one. Oh, I, I got one. Get it. Don't be afraid to fly 4S. Okay. Oh, if you fly yeah. 3S packs and yeah. you're wanting to make yeah. the transition, just do it. Yeah. yeah you do it. just start on 4S. 4S is easier to fly if you ask. Yeah, I I actually don't recommend 3S to beginners anymore. I just say just go straight to 4S. Yeah. 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 It's if if it's too much power and it won't be, you can always limit it. Put on smaller just, props. Yeah, prop down. Yeah, prop down or you, I mean you could even use the software to limit it. To, <laughs> or you know add a curve to your throttle, add a limit or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Or, hey, that's another thing. Don't put curves on your throttle. That doesn't make sense to me. Why would you curve your throttle? So imagine. You... <laughs> oh, I meant no. I meant a try. <laughs> I meant a limit, and I, I corrected myself. Yeah. I don't think curves on your throttle helps you because the throttle's the part you play with the most. Right. Uh, you have to control the throttle the whole time, mm-hmm. whether you're diving at the ground, pulling around a tree, going around a corner. Until so you lock it out with a switch, that is the least. Thing. Yeah, yeah, until you lock it with a flat line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that that's one thing we might practice in the future: is full throttle or no throttle. <laughs> totally. I mean, once you get to that point, I I know I couldn't do it, but I think you guys are probably some I, of the closest. <laughs> I would have to guess it's slower though, if I had to guess. Uh, yeah, I think I think I might agree with that. Um, yeah, I'll give you that. Um, more tips. You had one. I kind of have one. Are you still there? Yep, I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) Give them your pro tip. I heard it too. Yeah, my pro tip. Um, these guys are always talking to me about whatever it is they're focusing on. There's always, (laughs) there's always some shit they're focusing on. They've got a couple of ideas that they understand they need help with and they Mm -hmm. do, and then they focus on them and, and it changes things. One of the things I'm focusing on now is the way I approach a new race course. You can see, you know, just in my team, I can see people walk up to the course and treat it differently on their first lap versus their second or -hmm. or third lap or third battery. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people like Sean Taylor, who do a ton of practicing and and make a ton of new courses, have practice in their approach to new courses that that I envy. Okay. And I think it's something worth focusing on to – you know, we all go through this phase when we set up a new course of speeding up on it. Mm-hmm. And if you set up enough courses and focus on the right things as you start these courses, my theory is you can shorten that that length of time. Okay. And that's a super valuable skill when it comes to races. I okay. totally agree. Good thing you brought that up. Uh, a drill I did with Bapu and friends a while back was we did mm-hmm. from takeoff to the last gate was what we had time, mm-hmm. and you have to get one lap as fast as you can. Okay. Um, and then by the end of the day, our first laps are as fast as our average lap. Okay. Um, so, I mean, obviously we learned the course, but we'd fly backwards and different stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I noticed that helped a ton. The, like even, even if I've been flying all day, I noticed before we were doing that, I would take off and I'd still fly a lap or two slow. And then, you know, halfway through the battery, then I'm cranking them out. So right. that's another thing, you know, you, if you're going to fly a warm up battery, fly a warm up battery. Yeah. But if you're going to fly a track and you're going to practice your racing, practice racing. Yeah. Don't just yeah. put laps well, in. One thing I do is I, I always go really slow on the course the first time. And if, Never again. if I were to try to go <laughs> fast for my first three batteries on the course, yeah. Um, I would be slower on the third battery than if I had spent my first battery going slower. Does that make sense? No. If I go if I go slower <laughs> on my first battery, I'm ultimately going faster on my third battery okay. than if I was to just try to push it from first to third from the beginning. That first slower battery, I know, helps a guy like me. Okay. So it's something we're all working on. I like that. Yeah. I don't know. Transitioning so, the pitching. Yeah, so one thing I've been working on is that smoothness of flight I've been talking about which then leads to proper race lines. Okay. So that's something Chris Fisher here seems to somehow magically know more than the rest of us about. (laughs) Um, The proper, the proper flight lines. Yeah. So, I mean, with a quad, these super overpowered quads, it's so easy to just blast to a gate, whip a turn, blast the next gate, whip a turn, blast the next gate, because we have all this excess bullshit power. And it power. feels good. Yeah, and it's it fun. Feels so yeah. good. It's yeah. fun and it feels good and we all love that's ourselves. When just... <laughs> but that's not the fastest way. Okay. Maybe going a little slower and a little smoother 
and having these nice curvy turns instead of just this V turn, mm -hmm. you know, there's, it might not look as cool and it might not sound as amazing, but it's still a good race line with good turns. It will still always be faster in terms of lap times than just a blast, a V turn, a blast, a, you know, and, and yeah. whatnot. And on that point, yeah, the mentality of I want to go fast will cause you to fly sloppy. Okay. Exactly. I really believe you should just be flying the track. And okay. if you notice places you can go faster, go faster in those places. Okay. But if you approach flying with I need to be fast, I, I see people do it a lot. They just end up flying all over the place and shaking and bouncing around and mm -hmm. and it's very slow. It's very very yeah, slow it'll cost that. you. Yeah. So what? So what's what? You're, what's going to happen more often than not is you're going to blow blow through. It's so like say you have a hairpin turn, for example. That's probably a good place where managing yeah. your race line is going to become more important. If you so you're you're doing a complete 180, you're coming around a corner. If you lay on the throttle into that and just try to lay on the throttle all the way through and come back, what's going to happen is you're going to shoot way out past the edge of that hairpin. But if you come into it a little bit slower, manage your speed and just kind of use it to crank around to the other side and shoot back out without gaining that extra distance and losing that extra, I mean, honestly, battery power, um, you're going to be flying a faster line by maintaining yeah. or by managing yeah. your throttle better. It might not be as fast miles per an hour, but it will still be faster in terms of laptop. Yeah. yeah. Maintaining momentum is huge on a race line. And mm -hmm. then the other major huge thing is sacrifice the entrance to pick up on the exit. So if you have a slalom where you have like three turns you need to make, okay. be sloppier on, or not sloppier, be wider on the first or maybe the middle turn so that you can be tighter and faster on the last turn so mm -hmm. that you can accelerate the longest. Mm -hmm. that, that gives you the most time to accelerate. If you're trying to be really fast through the whole thing, you're averaging it all and maybe not accelerating as much at the end where you need it the most. Okay. Yeah, like we see that a lot where you'll full speed into the gate and then you try and turn around on a hairpin and get out of it. It's that you're kind of just sitting there in limbo for a yeah, second. It's a lot of yeah. So change. if you slow down ahead of time before you get to the gate and then you have a lot more speed coming out, that's more advantageous then yeah the and i think where this shines the most is when you have gates at the exits of corners or at the apexes of corners okay that's where flying properly will definitely set you know the better pilots and the worst pilots apart okay where you have to manage that speed okay so zach what's what's something you're working on something i'm working on right now is being as fast as jordan <laughs> did you guys hash it out no, not yet. We no. still haven't raced. No, we haven't raced. Ever. I, I don't know what I'm... Really? Yeah. I, right? I believe it. <laughs> the thing I'm working on is flying backwards. That's the warehouse. Yeah, but... You guys weren't really racing. That wasn't well, fair. Yeah. I've flown it like 100 hours. And sure, yeah, for like totally two. fair. Um, I don't know what I'm working on right now. We just got back <laughs> from all these trips and all this... Uh, I'd say me and Jordan are both definitely working on flying backwards. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how that helps with our race line. <laughs> it's it's a it. it's a yeah, freestyle technique. And... The machine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the big thing I always focus on is being smooth and fast. So just keeping that smoothness and raising the speed at the same time. Okay. Um, I really feel like that's basically the most important point you can do. So that's always my focus when I fly. Um, on top of that, you know, go backwards because it's weird. Because Maddie stunts. Because Maddie stunts. <laughs> ma 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 stunts. Christian, what are you working on? Oh, Christian. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. <laughs> no, um, I've been messing around with my uh, this gimbal tension on my transmitter just okay. to see if it's a different feel because I've had it set up for the longest time with it just being like completely sloppy, like where it's like jello. Like I can't feel where mm -hmm. the, the pitch is like centered or the roll. So yeah, yeah. I've locked that down a bit and it's helped smooth my flying out a bunch and also switching over to more of like a hybrid pinch okay. seems to be helping smooth my flying out. Okay. And um, yeah. Awesome. The biggest thing. So. I I've actually been thinking about trying to break break mine open and see if I can tighten up my gimbals a little bit. Like because so I, I fly Tyrannus, 
Um, and I've held like three or four other people's Tyrannuses, Tyranni. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's a, a, every time I touch someone else's, it's very, it's it's a little bit more stiff than um, the gimbals on my Tyrannus. And so I, I, and I always, I think I like that. I think I, I think it would help kind of reduce some of my kind of uh, like nervous tremors a little bit. Like it's, and it, it's not even like intentional or like I'm actually losing focus it's just it's just there like it's there's just the thing i can do about it and so i think i'm wondering if tightening it up might help with that so i i mean i'm i'm glad to hear that you're thinking about or that you're playing around with that because i i think i might go try it now too jesse i know something that might help oh, with the tremors sorry. you're talking about yeah if Please. you just breathe yeah yeah <laughs> i find breathe. myself not breathing Why sometimes breathe while you okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a huge one. It is, especially in a race setting. We yeah. tell each other that when we're going up to the line. Yeah. Also, when there's, like, hey, when there's a lot of nerves. Time, you know? yeah. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of nerves in a race. Yeah. Um, something that we found out that works really, really good is to stomp a shitload yeah. right before release the race. Yell, yell. Yeah. 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 Just kind of, yeah. you know, it, it looks kind of foolish, but it, man, it's a release. Yeah. 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 Nasty tension that's in your body. Everybody's right. advice really has always been to uh, suppress it. Yeah. yeah. It's just release it's a it. Yeah. It makes such a big difference. Yeah. Let yeah. it out. Yell. Like, I would say Dubai was a shining example of that for qualifying. You come into this room and it's just like, sterile you feel like you're in a doctor's office yeah, almost and you're waiting for the rubber glove to snap do to yeah <laughs> you don't do what <laughs> stomp, and stomp or scream oh. or well shake yeah i mean everyone's gonna have their own part. thing like yeah, yeah. If you're feeling tense yeah, shake it out yeah jump yeah. yell you know Dance. punch He's, someone you can't see him but jordan's dancing right now <laughs> <laughs> he actually looks good <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, so they're gonna put your clothes back on. And we'll get back to this. Jordan's over there loving himself. <laughs> <laughs> Go love yourself, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, definitely dealing with your, uh, your your tension levels is important. So um, breathing, screaming, both at the same time sometimes. War so, cry. Or that's, like that's what I'm going to call jokes it. Jokes at each other. Yeah. yeah. Also, you, you have to realize, like, if you're not having fun, yeah. Why'd you show up? Yeah. So, yeah, to exactly. <laughs> Don't you remember? Yeah. <laughs> to win. Yeah, you always show up to win, obviously. Winning is fun. But at the same First time, show up to fun. At, show up for fun. <laughs> yeah. Jesse. What about you? What's something you're working on? Uh, I'm interested in uh, actually set up a new course at the warehouse, guys. Uh, about falling into a dip and then a hard turn so you have way more speed than you can handle. Okay. And I want to study how to shed speed, essentially. That's what I wanted. In a tight order. Mm. Well, you have to shed the speed because it's tight. That was like in Utah. But how do you deal, yeah. how do you deal with the, the speed? Yeah, we okay. went down a hill and into a gate in Utah, and it was like really fucking Oh, uh, I We had a track set up like that in Bapu's backyard. You couldn't <laughs> tell because it was downhill. And then you came out of a gate, and you'd blow the corner wide. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So, it, um, so yeah. we don't deal with a lot of up and down, even though we can. We yeah. still don't. Yeah. So... This new course that I have at the warehouse that we're flying at all the time, we're going to go from like two stories up down into this little pocket. It's going to be a motherfucker. So we have to <laughs> figure out how to get yeah. get through it. You could go through it, but you, to go through it fast and yeah. fastest, you can yeah. catch yourself. That's interesting. And not yeah. uh, destroy your equipment. Oh, we do that anyway. <laughs> well, we, that, we, let's rewind. That was one of the points. You are going to destroy your equipment if yeah. you want to be faster. But yeah. stop loving it. Build a second one. Yeah. You gotta pull the corner. <laughs> Build three or four, ideally. <laughs> I mean, you don't even have to do that. Like, I only own two, three working quads, and they're kind of just hmm. in continual repair. Yeah. I don't know. I know some yeah. people who own like six or seven. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's like, hey, you it's awesome. just, I don't know. It might be even cheaper. I think it's a lot cheaper to just have a bunch of spare motors than it is to have yeah. seven quads. Maintain, yeah. maintain. You can always energy. field repair. Go on Hobby King, buy the XT60 soldering iron that costs like three fifty, and then you can plug in any battery to it and solder in the field. Yeah, yeah. I think you just need to realize you. It's if you're wanting to race, you're. It's a tool. It's not a, not a trophy. Yeah. The trophy's what you get after. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make it pretty. Make it work. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, cool. Uh, do you guys have any uh, last wrapping up words? Any kind of like, if somebody took away one thing from this, from each of you, what would it be? For me? Start with I would Jordan. say tilt your camera further forward. Okay. And go forward fast, not hover fast. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just Don't. force yourself to, I mean, that's the one way I think how do you force someone to go forward faster and it's more camera tilt? Okay. Yeah. Zach. Uh, fly smooth. Pay attention to flying smooth and make that your goal. Okay. Exit and enter your corners and your gates. I square. said one thing. Uh, well, <laughs> part of the flying smooth. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Jesse. <laughs> um, I'm going to say fly outside your comfort zone. And, okay. And... Uh, a big way to, to do that, we haven't talked about it yet, a simulator is huge. It's not oh, yeah. real, yeah, we didn't talk but there's about a major it. use for a simulator in spite of how weird it can feel. Okay. You're learning a lot when you're doing the simulator at night, mm -hmm. so I'm a huge uh, proponent of the simulators, especially, I think my favorite right now is Lift Up. Yeah. yeah. But there's a couple new ones I haven't tried. Yeah, so actually, I'd like to talk more about that. Let's, let's, talk, about let's, it. Yeah, let's talk about the sim. So the sim... You know, is, uh, a lot of people complain that, oh, it doesn't feel real to life, yada, yada. But it's not about it being one-to-one -one with your personal quad. It's a, For me, it's about the muscle memory. Yeah. It's about just, you know, in elementary school, when you have to write a bunch of A's and a bunch of B's, it's yeah. just making your hands do that. You know, no one writes on this big dotted line like you did in elementary school, but right. you do it because it makes your hand learn those things. Right. Yeah. Same is the same thing. It might not necessarily feel like real life, but the stick movements are still pretty darn close that yeah. it translates really well. Specifically high speed, high risk maneuvers. Mm -hmm. The muscle memory in the high risk maneuvers are way easy, well, better to learn on a simulator. And cheaper. Well, yeah. Well, let's put it this way. Me and Jordan learned to fly backwards in four nights on a simulator and broke mm -hmm. zero quads our first attempts. Nice. Yeah, we went and flew 20 batteries and backwards. backwards. And nice. that was just because we had practiced on the sim. We had knew how to move our pitch and what, you know, how it felt to be going backwards. And then it translated, you know, it, it took a couple batteries to get used to our quads going yeah. backwards but yeah it, it was it was a quick learning experience Be because, because you experience. yeah you had already established the muscle memory it's just exactly. refining it to the particular gear that yeah. you're on now yeah I, to quick. I totally yeah. agree with that and i could point you to seven or eight people who never picked up a real quad played 10 15 hours of liftoff went out and just dominated the first time they yeah, flew like, something yeah, real like it's it's crazy yeah. yeah, it would have been so nice back in the day. This yeah. is a new phenomenon that we all wish would have come sooner. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. funny. Speaking of Adam, he brought up a good point. Our quads fly better than the simulators can now. Yeah. Which is sort of awesome. Ish. Christian. Don't be afraid to crash. Yeah. Definitely agree. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. All right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris. Chris, um, make Chris. sure that you know how to control your height with pitch, not throttle. Okay. Yeah. Pitch, not throttle. Big one. And then simulate. Simulate. And reduce simulate. Yeah. I want to say to all the people out there, Big Whoop accepts all challenges. <laughs> <laughs> make some friends and make a team. You'll, you'll get more out of the team than you think. And then come yeah. at us, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we'll end. I mean it. <laughs> Actually, I want to elaborate on that. We were going to accept all challenges, and please submit them at some link I'm pointing at that Paul at. Yeah. All right, I will. Go add love it. yourself. <laughs> Go love yourself, and then challenge Team Big Whoop. <laughs> Preferably while, wash your hands in between. Well, yeah, while you're conf confident. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Team Big Whoop, for joining us to uh, uh, love ourselves and to <laughs> and to talk about how to become better, faster pilots. Uh, I really, really appreciate all of your time, and I, I'm sure that everyone that gets to listen will as well. Um, you guys are fantastic. I, I've, I've probably said it just about every time I've talked to Zach or Jesse or um, uh, uh, Jordan. 
Um, but I, I love Team Big Whoop. I love watching your guys' stuff, and I love um, you know just everything that you're doing to kind of create that uh, air of camaraderie in the the FPV racing community. And I can't wait, and I always can't wait to see what you guys are going to do next. Hey, we love what you're doing too, man. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> I yeah, love how. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, you take it to another level. Thanks for all the information. Thank we you. love that you love us, so we're going to keep loving. Are we going <laughs> to see you down in Louisville? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. All right. All right. Let's party. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody, for uh, joining us on uh, this la this kind of impromptu FPV live stream podcast, not live thing. Um, this has been Team Big Whoop, and uh, we can't wait to see you next time. Thank you very much. Big Whoop! Team Big Whoop! Big Whoop! Big whoop, whoop.